my passion is to help all children have success with mathematical reasoning and problem solving. That's the how um, I see reasoning, I see problem solving were born. And there's going to be another arm to that, which I'm aiming to create, which is a resource around deconstructed word questions, how all children can have success and understand the deep structures of worded questions. Um, now, I, at the moment, I'm in the product design phase. And really what I'd like to know is what you think about my ideas and specifically how they can be improved there's going to be lots of samples that will go out to everyone on my mailing list and the end of the video shows how to get onto that mailing list. Um, but the emphasis is about how do we make sure that all children, before they actually answer questions and look at the numbers and do something, how do they think about the deep structure of a question and focus thinking around that and conversation around that? Um, so here's a technique that I've used with younger children and a common uh, structure that, you, that will be used in this resource as well. Covering up the information that's required to answer a question in a blue box, covering up the question in a red box, and often first asking children, what, what could the question be? Um, and listing different possible questions. When children have generated different possible questions, I could then remove the red box and say, well, actually the question is, how many bananas can he buy? And then children having to think, well, what information must be needed to be able to answer that question? How many bananas can he buy? And then we thought about the deep structure and that would put us in a position to kind of calculate the answer. Um, now, I'm going to use the same techniques in lots of contexts that could be used in, uh, in Upper Key Stage 2. The examples on this video from SATS papers, the examples I create will be much broader than that. But let's say here, again, I could go for, and I'll be very brief here, what could the question be? What information would be needed to answer that question? In this instance, I'd probably reveal the information first, the number of eggs the farmer has. Think about what are the possible questions there. Reveal it. It's actually, and I would reveal the uh, two possible questions. One, how many boxes can a farmer fill using all the eggs? Should to come up with a possible answer. Then we see the number. And then the related question, which is how many boxes are needed um, to hold all of the eggs and for children to see when that one change takes place, how, do, how does that affect the answer? And for children to appreciate the effect of that change. Um, now, as well as prompts that teachers will show to deconstruct, there'll then be other activities for children to have a go at. Now, feel free to pause the video here if you want time to read these examples. But what we have are three contexts that are all around, do I round up or do I round down, using the same calculation for children to think, well, what, which, which of the questions have the similar structure, which are different, and to focus children's thinking on all these, on this kind of family of tasks that are related, but in this instance, having different, what we might call surface features, um, like a different context, but for children to be able to relate those contexts. Um, there will be, in the resource, the, the trial of the resource that I'm creating, um, sequences of questions where there are minimal differences between those questions. Again, for children to appreciate those small changes and the effect that they have. Again, I invite you just to pause the video if you'd like longer to look at these specific examples. And so in the first instance, we have, um, we can, how many full boxes can be made? It's five. And in the second instance, it's still five boxes, even though there's more cupcakes. And we could reason as to why. Um, then on the third one, it's the same quantity, but this time I'm asked how many boxes are needed. And it's just in these small changes that children are able to appreciate the effect of those changes. Question three to question four, we double the number of cu cupcakes, and yet it isn't double the number of boxes. And then again, we shift between different contexts for questions five and six. But in that little variation, for, ch for, um, for children to appreciate the differences that exist there. Um, I also want to help children break down multi-step questions like this one. I've seen so many times children come to a question like this and overwhelmed with information and, and they don't know where to begin. And um, so what the, the prompts will do is break down and get children thinking about the structure. So, for example, the information will be revealed like this. The length of an alligator can be estimated by measuring the distance from its eyes to its nose, then... And now we can discuss, well, what kind of relationship is this? And what we're really exploring is why this is a multiplication context and not an addition context. And um, then I could reveal that I multiply the distance by 12. Children again could find a possible length for the, for the alligator. 
And then when I get back to that original prompt, what I might do, is, or what we will have is examples of like method A, method B. Sometimes both methods will be correct and one method will be more efficient than another. There might be a correct and an incorrect example, but a plausible example. And for children to be able to say, I think it, the best method is method, in this instance, method B, because, and so really understanding and unpicking the process of problem solving. And um, related prompts, and one, one prompt that I like is, is this one where I might ask children, given this information, well, underneath the first box is a question that where there's one step to find the answer. And the second box, a multi-step question, what could those questions be? And for children to predict questions, then to be thinking about the structure of questions. And then again, we'll reveal what those questions actually are. Um, but again, children, have, it's taken away the emphasis on the answer and really thinking about the process. That would be the design of this resource will incorporate ideas like that. Um, then again, those sequences of questions for children to move between and, and to see questions with different surface features, different context questions, but for children to see the relationships between them that progress in difficulty or change. So again, I'd invite you, if you want to go deep here, pause the video and have a read through and have a go at those examples. And what we have is the first question where it is a, a multiplication is required. The second question where it's a division. Now, you'd notice that for the first two, you know, three is a factor of 15 and is also a factor of 12. So that doesn't kind of give the clue as to whether I should be multiplying or dividing. Um, the third question, which becomes a multi-step calculation where the challenge increases. And the fourth, where it actually isn't even a multiplication. It's an additive structure because there's this constant difference between the ages of the children. So children, not necessarily just when we're working on addition, they only see addition and when they're working on multiplication, they only ever see multiplication examples. But for children to discern between additive and multiplicative reasoning. Um, another technique that will be right throughout this resource, certainly in its initial phase, will be visual representations like a bar model. And um, this example is actually taken, I think, from IC Reasoning Year 5, but where children will have questions and be asked, for example, which bar model represents the structure of this question um, to help children to really make those, those connections. So really excited about the different techniques that could be used. And of course, other suggestions that you would have and adaptions that you would make, all the different ways that this idea, this initial idea that I have could potentially be improved. If you'd like more ideas about this technique and more examples, if you go to training, online teacher training, then there are two videos there that are designed. Uh, one of the videos is designed for year two and year three classes for deconstructing worded questions. Another where the examples are relevant for years four to six on, on using numberless prompts. That'll give lots more examples there that can be used. And if you'd like to get the sample resources and tell me what you think of them, what you like and how they can be improved, if you go to the mailing list on the website, then you'll get all of those samples through. I'm going to start working on the first set of samples soon. I hope that's really useful. I hope you're intrigued by this idea.